class. Class. Yes, yes. Awesome discussion. So all of that, now you have a little bit of background, and we are going to talk about, we're going to skip that. <laughs> we're going to talk about the progression of acquisition, okay? So this is where the alphabet, that alphabetic principle comes in, okay? Kids learn the alphabetic principle first, learning letters, learning the sounds, a relationship in words. Then, second, they move into patterns, starting to notice that um, certain groups of letters often occur together and some letters never occur together. Okay, so starting to notice that. And then our last, our last um, piece is meaning. So noticing how meaning affects spelling. Noticing that meaning and spelling are related in a lot of words. Um, every child goes through this progression of acquisition. The only difference is they don't go through it at the same rate. So if I'm teaching third grade, traditionally, oh, I have my third grade spelling list. Everybody gets the third grade list. That's kind of like telling all of you, you all have to wear my glasses when you're in my class or you're going to fail. Hey, we do that with kids. We say, okay, third grade, you're in the third grade list. Everybody has to know the third grade list. But the rate of acquisition varies. So everybody goes through those stages, but the rate in which they go through it um, varies. Now, what the words are way people, oh yeah, Audra. So would you um, give a student a different list for spelling? Mm -hmm. So how would you And that's what them? we're gonna learn. Oh, so okay. we're gonna learn all the stages today and then next week we'll learn how you put put kids in their stage okay. and how you would do that. Excellent question. You're just advanced. <laughs> okay, so in this book, Words Their Way, um, the authors of this book have taken lots of spelling research and they have come up with five stages of spelling development. And we're gonna talk about those and learn those today. Um, so there are emergent, these are the five, letter name alphabetic, within word pattern, symbols and affixes, and derivational relations. Now, when we look at this progression of acquisition, those five stages fit here, okay? So you have emergent, which is barely, barely in the alphabetic stage. And then we have letter name, which is in between, alphabetic and patterns. Then you have within word pattern, syllables and affixes, and derivational relations. Those are the five developmental stages that are in the Words Their Way book. Now, one thing that's great about this book is it's set up so that you can reference those really, really easily. If you look at your book from this, like um, the side, you can see there's little tabbed sections. So how the book is set up is chapter one is all about theory and knowledge. Chapter two, is all about assessment. Chapter three is all about organization. Then chapter four is all about emergent spellers. And then the little tab section um, includes activities and games that you could do for emergent spellers. And then chapter five is letter name spellers. And then the tab section, games and activities for letter name spellers, um, and so on. So I love the way the book set up because it really, really supports you teaching those stages. All right, we're going to go ahead and look closely at each stage. And as I do this, um, you do have some slides to reference. And the second page looks like this. And this has all five stages. And the reason I've given you this, and the reason I'm telling you this right now, is because next week, the quiz, we're going to do the developmental spelling stage quiz. I will just give you a blank piece of paper. And on that piece of paper, you're gonna list all five stages and then two attributes for each stage. The reason I'm telling you this is so that you really pay attention. <laughs> I'm giving you a rationale here, okay? So let's start with the emergent <coughs> stage. The emergent stage, think little, little kids. Think my niece that was writing that day. You know, we saw her scribble writing. Emergent, uh, the emergent stage concept development, so learning about the kitchen and the words that might be in a kitchen, or learning about Christmas and words that go with Christmas. Um, that is concept development and vocabulary growth, learning different vocabulary um, to be at school. What are the words to be at school? This is a really hard, kindergarten can 
can be really hard because you have kids that maybe have traveled, that have very educated parents. In their house, they have a writing center because their mom's a teacher and they're read to every day. And you have kids like that. And then you have kids that don't have books, that have never left their town. And they're all coming together in kindergarten. So kindergarten, it, you have to kind of really build that vocabulary, that common language for all of those kids. Um, also in the emergent stage, phonemic awareness. So being able to hear the sound in words, being able to hear those sounds. Concept of word is just knowing that a word is um, letters surrounded by space as meaning, means something. Um, the knowledge of the alphabet, they can sing the song, they know that there's an alphabet, but there's no sound symbol match yet. Okay, this is all emergent stage, generally pre-K to middle first. So I have this book called Bunny Cakes by Rosemary Wells. And in this book, um, this is Max and Ruby. Who's familiar with her Max and Ruby? <laughs> yeah, Max and Ruby. Ruby's such a whiner. <laughs> um, in the cartoon, anyway. Okay, so in this book, Bunny Cakes, Max and Ruby are making a cake for Grandma for her birthday. And Max really wants to help, but the first thing he does is knocks over the eggs. So Ruby writes a list and sends Max to the grocery store with a list that says eggs. Well, Max wanted red hot marshmallow squirters for his earthworm cake. So he wrote red hot marshmallow squirters on the list. Can you see Max's writing? <laughs> okay, this is emergent writing. He knows about red hot marshmallow squirters, so he has vocabulary, but he doesn't have sound symbol. Okay, so there's his writing, and he goes to the grocer, and the grocer gives him the eggs, but doesn't give him the candy. Okay, then he spills the milk, same thing. He writes red hot marshmallow squirters in a different way. So he goes to the grocer, the grocer gives him milk. When he gets back home, this time, Ruby um, has, has drawn a picture. Max is not allowed. Okay, so this time, Max gets a different idea. And Ruby says, she baked it and cooled it and iced it with raspberry fluff iced frosting. It needs something else, Max, said Ruby. Said Ruby. Birthday candles, silver star, sugar hearts, buttercream roses, wrote Ruby. Meanwhile, Max had a brand new idea. And Max drew a picture. And he, he ran to the grocer and guess what the grocer said? What's this? Why, it must be red hot marshmallow squirters. So he got what he was after. It just took a couple of tries. Okay, good example of emergent writing. He knows that the writing or symbols have some kind of meaning. Um, I always wonder, like the kid can't talk. What's he doing going to the grocery store by himself, right? <laughs> um, okay, here's another example. This was years ago, my little sage. I was going to McDonald's, okay? It was like a summer night and we were out late. Okay, mom, I want a Happy Meal with chicken nuggets, um, apple dippers, chocolate milk, and a girl toy. And she hands me this list. Now, this list does not say that, actually, <laughs> right? But if we're looking at her as a pre-K um, emergent speller, does she have concept development and vocabulary of McDonald's? Unfortunately, yes, she did. <laughs> um, does she have um, concept of word? Okay, concept of word. Letters put together with spaces and it has meaning. Definitely she has concept of word. Um, she has knowledge of the alphabet. There's no sound symbol, but she does know about the alphabet. Okay, so this is emergent spelling. This is an A plus in emergent spelling. All right, go ahead and turn to your buddy and review emergent, the emergent stage. Teach. Okay, so we're reviewing that. So they know, um, they know the alphabet ABCs, but they don't know sound symbols. Right, and they also are aware of like certain words that will be certain words. Christmas words, McDonald's words. That's included. Oh, okay. Right, okay. Class, class. Yes, yes. Okay, any 
questions about emergence? Okay, let's go. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Concept development is like, okay, we're in school. What are the concepts of school? Okay. And it goes with vocabulary. Okay. So developing that, like when um, kindergarten teachers do a whole unit mm -hmm. about something that's developing those concepts. Okay. Good question. Okay, our next stage, letter, name, alphabetic. Okay, say it three times. Letter, name, alphabetic, letter, name, alphabetic, letter, name, alphabetic. So we're taking the names of letters and the alphabet, okay? At the beginning of this stage, each letter stands for a whole word. So let's pretend that I'm writing and I'm drawing a picture of my house and I'm writing my house. So one letter means the whole word, but there is a sound symbol match, okay? My house. Really, really quick, kids start to include a vowel with, um, with their words. And <laughs> let's practice. What vowel do you think they include most often? Um. Let's say the vowel sounds. Okay, so let's talk about short vowel sounds. The short vowel sounds are a, e, i, a, a. Okay, go ahead and say those with me. Ready, go. A, e, i, a, a. Now, this time I want you to over exaggerate your mouth and pay attention to how it feels. You ready? A, e, i, a, a. What happened with your mouth? It stays the same. It stays open. Your tongue moves just a little bit. So if I'm a little kid and I'm writing hop, H, I'm going to go ah, 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 A, because that's the first letter. So they use A most often. Okay, um, another thing kids will do is what letter is easiest to make the shape? Okay, so if I'm writing pig, Ha ha ha. I, 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 e, I, I, e. Can you see how that, so that formation of your mouth? I know that is little, but that makes a big difference. So, one thing I say to kids is write down all the sounds that you hear and feel. What does your mouth feel like when you say those sounds? Okay, so they include a vowel in each word. Oftentimes it's A. And they also include or learn short vowels before long vowels. And we're going to take a little spelling test so you can see why, okay? Anywhere on your paper, um, number from one to eight. We're going to do a little spelling test. Here we go. Number one, the word is grab. Will you grab some milk on your way home? Grab. Okay, number two is rat. The rat ran fast. Okay, number three is gratitude. I have a gratitude section in my notebook. Okay, number four is cake. I made Scott a carrot cake for our anniversary because he loves it so much. <laughs> Okay, number five. <laughs> number five is rain. The rain fell hard on the spring day. Rain. Um, number six is hay. Like there was some hay on the ground and it made me itch. Okay, number seven is acorn. An acorn was lying on the ground. Acorn. And number eight is eight, like the number eight. She turned eight years old. All right, look at those words. And can anyone tell me what is similar about all eight words? Is there anything similar about them? What do you think, Audra? Um, well, they all say like a sound. They all have some kind of an A sound, okay? Would you all agree? And all of them actually have the letter A, except for eight. eight. Okay, look at the first three words. Okay, grab, rat, and gratitude. All three of those words have the short A sound, ah. And everybody tell me, how do you spell short A? 
A with an A, okay? If you hear the sound A, ah, it is spelled with an A. Now the other five words all have long A, and how many ways are there to spell long A, just in this example? Five, okay, the cake is A consonant silent E, rain, A-I, hay, A-Y, um, acorn, A syllable break, corn, and then eight, E-I-G-H. So long vowel patterns are super complex, and they don't come yet, <laughs> okay? Yeah, kind of crazy. So short vowels are a part of letter name. Long vowels are a part of within word pattern. So we haven't even gotten there yet. Okay, so short vowels. Um, basic blends and digraphs. A blend, you may have learned this in literacy, but I'm not sure. Um, a blend is two or three letters together, and you hear all of their sounds. Okay, so if I have the word blend, and if we take BL in blend, that is a blend. BL, BL, CL, SL, SN, those are all called blends. Now, a digraph is when you have two letters together and it makes a new sound. Like PH in digraph says the F sound, so that is an example of a digraph. So that's how you can remember it. The word blend has a blend, the word digraph has a digraph. Digraphs are generally with an H. Yes, I'm not as smart as I am. <laughs> <laughs> what? I noticed that last time. Like Annie discovered this. <laughs> Oh, but I didn't discover it, you discovered it. Oh, but you pointed it out to everyone. Yay! Yeah, yeah good. So you, that's a good way to remember it, right? Okay. So, blends and digraphs. And the last bullet, or this bullet, word families. So, word families are if I said rat, and I know rat is R A T, how do I spell cat? C A T. Fat. F A T. Mat. M A T. Those are word families. Okay, so all of those um, generally kindergarten to middle second grade. Maria. Yeah. So when we take the quiz next yeah. week, do you want us to give it like an explanation or an example? No. Nope. Okay. You can just put bullet, short vowels. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Here's our sample. Now the last sample was Sage Pre K. This is one year later. Look how much she's learned. I'm like way impressed, right? Okay, here we go. It says, Mom, I love you. Sage Glazier. I hope I have a good teacher. <laughs> what are we doing today? Can we go bowling, please? <laughs> I love you. She's still like this. She's still always like, what are we doing? What are we doing? Can we go bowling? Can we go bowling? <laughs> So if we look at this as a letter name speller, okay, mom, she has beginning sound, she has ending sound, she's, um, she's using a lot of vowels, she's not just using one letter, she's beyond that. Um, she can write her name, she has some high frequency words like love and you, hope, she doesn't have long vowel markers yet, um, have would be considered a short vowel, so she has that short vowel. A uh, good teacher, see that HC? That's what we call using but confusing. Okay, kids are using but confusing. That's the stage they're at. So she sometimes has it and sometimes doesn't. That's using but confusing. So she's using but confusing the digraph right here. Um, can we go bowling? Like, yeah, no. Uh, please, she's got the blend, but not the long vowel. Um, what? She has like a sound symbol match. Um, are we doing today? And she does have the long vowel in there. So, pretty good example of a letter name speller. Um, generally, you first to even fourth grade. I've had fifth graders that are at this stage. So, you can see if you were a fifth grader and you were at this stage and you never learned, it's really hard to all of a sudden in fifth grade have to spell syllables and affixes words. Um, the reason I put the word gratitude in your te little test is because if you learn at in letter name, then I can spell gratitude because it has that at part. So I use that to move on.
Okay, so go ahead and, oh, I have another sample, just a sec. Um, okay, here we go. I am going to shoot my BB gun. <laughs> okay, I, she's got am, short vowel, she's got going. shoot, um, with the S-H, and she's got the a, uh, the short U. Uh, yeah, Jessica. So, if you do have a student, like, in the older grades, fourth, fifth grade, who are in that stage, is there something you can do to help them? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. And that's one reason I'm having you learn all the stages, and then I'll, and then we'll learn the assessment, and then I'll teach you what to do. Okay. Yeah. Good question. Okay, here is one more, and I wanted, I, there's a specific reason I'm showing you this. It says, yesterday I had a sleepover. It was fun. Okay. <laughs> So if we look at this word yuz, if I'm a kindergartner and I'm writing was, and I go what, 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 why, what, 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 why. So that's where that comes from. So I teach kindergarten kids to say what, what, wubble you, <laughs> because they've got to, it's not a D, W, it's a what, what, at what sound. Okay, all right, go ahead and turn and teach your buddy letter name alphabetic stage. Teach, teach. Okay, so this is the one with the vowels, knowing there's first and ending sounds. Um, for the most part, they understand it, but they still can um, It says a vowel in each word. And she said, yes, this sounds like you and that's what you know, and her short vowels before the baby. One thing that helps me in this is how it's talking about basic yeah. lines and letter tracks. I think those are the basic ones. Four and four and four 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 this is more simple stage. Right. So that's where I remember those are in the third and then the most important ones. Class. Yes. Okay, any questions about letter names? All right, our next stage is the within word pattern stage. And um, the people that wrote words their way in some of their research, they said that perhaps 25% of the adult population in the United States, States is stunted at this point of literacy development. Kind of scary, but when I look at my little brother, that he is here. I remember he served an LDS mission in the 90s, so no email, but he'd write letters and I couldn't even read them because they would say like the word doesn't for example I remember d-u-z-n-t you know just very phonetic and it made me crazy I couldn't even I couldn't even deal with it even still we'll go places and I'll say oh there's a spelling error and Spencer says how do you know that like how do you know that that's a spelling error so really good instruction is how we're going to get away from here okay this is how we're going to get um, kids to advance from this point within word pattern think about that name and think about the spelling test I gave you five of those words actually four acorn does not fit in the within word pattern stage but four cake rain hay and apes those are all examples of within word patterns okay a consonant silent e a i a y um, E-I-G-H. Those are all within word patterns. And students at this stage, they start to notice those long vowel markers. They use but confuse those long vowel markers. Those are hard. And when I see a spelling list, like in the third grade, and there are five long vowel patterns on one list, and kids are somehow supposed to memorize that and remember, it's no wonder they don't do well. There has to be a lot, a lot of practice. And we'll get to what that looks like in a couple of weeks. But today I just want you to learn what the stage looks like. So we have long vowel markers, like on your test. Um, R influence vowels, those are things like A-R, O-R, I-R, U-R. They all say er, but when do we use I-R and when do we use U-R? Like if I have stir or I have fur, it sounds the same. Um, those are called R-controlled or R-influenced vowels. Knowing that when we hear the er sound, it has to have a vowel with it. A lot of kids will spell like girl without the, without the vowel. So this is when we're starting to notice that we have to have a vowel. Um, also in the stage, consonant patterns. 
um, like complex constant patterns like TCH in which, okay, that would be called a consonant pattern, or DG, like in Dodge, consonant patterns. So those are in this stage. Um, diphthongs, I know you want to say it with me. Say it three times. One, two, three. Diphthongs, diphthongs, diphthongs. Just because it's fun to say, right? <laughs> okay, diphthongs are when vowels make a totally new sound. All right, like oi in oil or oi in boy. Those are called diphthongs. And kids are like, um, are like, wait, oi, oi, oi. What is that? Oh, uh, is it an O? Oh? You know, they, it's like a totally new sound. <coughs> um, ambiguous vowels, that kind of goes with diphthongs, but those are vowels like the O-W in bowling, or A-W in crawl, or A-U, ah. Okay, those are called ambiguous vowels. Also in this stage, we have homographs and homophones. Homograph. Hey, let's do some um, gestures with me, okay? Ready? Homo means same, and graph means to write. So homograph is written the same. Okay, so everybody just say homograph. 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 Written homograph. the same. Homograph. Like um, nail, hammer and a nail, fingernail. Okay, written the same. Also, sometimes they sound the same, and sometimes they sound different. Like record, I cannot believe that records are so popular again. <laughs> like a black vinyl record, or we have record. I'm going to record my voice. Okay, those are called homographs. Now homophones, again, homo means same, phone means to hear. So homophones sound the same, but they're not spelled the same, like C and C. I can see you with my eyes, or we went sailing on the sea. Okay, that those are called homo, um, homophones. Generally, first grade to fourth, um, man, lots of adults are at this stage if they haven't had really, really, really good instruction. Let me show you an example. What to take to Flaming Gorge. Okay, so take, she's using long vowel pattern. Um, over here, this is called have a go. Her teacher taught her this skill um, to have a go. And this is something I do. If I don't know how to spell a word, I do have to write it out. Let me write it out and see if it looks right. Does anyone else do that? Yeah, so that's what McKenna did here. She did this little have a go to see if it looks right. Okay, so swimsuit was giving her some serious problems. Using but, but confusing that long vowel pattern. Okay, over here she has... O-T-E, O-O-T, O-U-T, and then finally decides on U-I-T. Using but confusing. Um, tent, she has. Boat, she had no problem. That's a long vowel pattern, using. Um, food, the O-O, that's an ambiguous vowel. She had that. Chairs, our control. Over here, cheer and chair. Um, pillows, she had a hard time with the short vowel, the I. I think that's because we lived in Payson, and <laughs> people speak lazy. <laughs> you know, people are like, oh, I'll go get my pillow for my orange bed. You know, they don't speak. <laughs> um, okay, blanket, clothes, life jacket, water, skis, <laughs> and a new board. I think that was supposed to be a new board. But really good example of using but confusing those long vowel markers, especially, but also our control um, and ambiguous vowels. Okay, so right now I want you to turn and talk to your buddy about what is the within word pattern stage, and then take a break and let's meet back at 12 minutes after. Okay, ready to go.